Hi, this is Shauna with the Jeff Cogiangelis Foundation. I'm here with our friend Brian from the FBI to cover some topics of uh, safety for seniors with you. Perfect, Shauna. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, I think what would be the most helpful would be to kind of cover some of the trending scams right now to provide really more of a, an exposure to, you know, certainly what your, your audience members may be encountering soon if they have not already. And so they can be better prepared for those types of uh, scams that, that they might encounter. Uh, but I, I guess first and foremost, I wanted to talk about our Internet Crime Complaint Center, which is is really the IC3.gov. Uh, you can see the link at the bottom there. But that is a great resource for educational information, also to learn more about elder fraud specific scams. As you can see there, I just provided a snapshot of the website, but it, it has a, a wealth of resources and also a link where you can file a specific elder fraud complaint. Now, I will tell you, I will kind of loop back into this at the tail end of the presentation here, because it is a, a very uh, critical step if you have become a victim in any type of scam where you have sent a fraudulent, I think, a, a wire of your funds, which to the fraudulent wire because you were fraudulent used to send it. So I will again kind of move back into why this is this website is very important for that perspective. So you know at the, at the FBI here we do get regular complaints uh, from from victims of, of all types, right? And it is a thing that we categorize. We say, okay, you know, hey, here's the top trending scams that we see or being we're receiving reports on. You know, by age group, you know, the kind of losses reported on those. And, you know, so here's the ones over the 2022 that we have seen. I'm not saying they're, they're in kind of random order on this one here, but, you know, these are kind of the main, probably the 10 most prolific ones we have received the most reports on over this year. Uh, I won't go into them in specific, but I will kind of highlight maybe the most prolific ones that we see. But, uh, you know, many of you probably have received some type of mailer about a, a, a sweepstakes that you've won or an email about it, you know, or the historical Nigerian, uh, you know, the lottery scam emails or the Nigerian prince that wants to, you know, bequeath his uh, inheritance to you or something and just needs your help with setting up a bank account. You know, so, I, I, you know, some of these are certainly more historical than others, but they still happen. So we, we just want to make sure that uh, everybody continues to stay aware that they're still out there just to be, uh, you know, able to recognize those when you come across them. So really the, the biggest and most prolific ones we are seeing right now is identity theft and tech support, computer virus, uh, pop-up warning scams, romance scams. I think with COVID, you know, it, it obviously caused people to be in a lockdown situation. And so they, everybody craves companionship for the most part. So people were hopping on dating websites and becoming victimized uh, by romance scams. And they have been very prolific, very successful, and oftentimes people have lost a lot of, of money. The last two are not really trends, but methods that the bad guys kind of utilize to perpetrate their scams, make it harder, uh, and just really red flags for you to be aware of uh, when you do come across something like uh, a, a pop-up scan or a, a telephone call out of the blue that says you're your bank account has likely been compromised. And so just some, some red flags to really be on the lookout for if you come across those. So again, I, I just want to provide a quick snapshot here. This is uh, so, some very recent data from September of 2022 that we received local to just Colorado uh, and victims over 60. So tech support, was by far the biggest one. Government impersonation close second, and then investment fraud, uh, you know, the third, and the associated losses and outfit those. So again, just highlighting what the trend was in September. So you can see by and large, tech support was huge. Identity theft is, has always been around. So this is nothing new. The bad guys just utilize uh, new scams with the identities that they've stolen. They can you know, this is not something even with your own, uh, by your own doing that may, you may have been compromised. You know, it could be, you know, your credit card company 
target, you know, you name it, there have been compromises reported everywhere now. Anywhere where there's a large trove of data that sits on a company's servers that has, you know, personally identifiable, personally identifiable information in the PII, you know, those companies are targets for the bad guys because they will scrape that data and then they will sell it on the black market for whatever the, the, the organized crime rings and the fraud are going to utilize that for. You know, so this is something you just have to constantly be on the lookout for, and it really relates to just make sure you do regularly check your credit reports. You know, sometimes you even put freezes on your credit reports. So if somebody is trying to you know, apply for a loan or do something where your credit is being hit, your freeze will will prevent that from happening. You can obviously lift the freeze if you yourself are trying to apply for a loan or something that is going to uh, hit your credit report. You can temporarily freeze it and then just put the freeze back in place. Uh, so, uh, again, identity theft has been around for a long time, but as of late, it's been much more prolific to do compromises at companies that you know, sadly are out of your control. You just have to kind of make sure you're, you're monitoring your own credit reports, your bank account information, you know, the credit card charges. Don't just assume everything on there is accurate. Make sure you are reviewing those or charges that you recognize, if not, obviously report them to whatever it is that you're putting in the bank or your, your credit card company. Uh, if you're receiving mail at times and says that you, uh, you know, receive unemployment, then, then maybe you should inquire a little bit further about that uh, because somebody may have been utilizing their information to apply for unemployment insurance with COVID. That was, that was a huge area. Uh, or even you know, if you, have, if you have a business, maybe payroll protection, some of the, the uh, uh, COVID-19 fraud, I'm sorry, COVID-19 spending relief bills that, uh, you know, uh, the Congress had put out to help with this. Those were areas where they were just grabbing identities of, of all different types and applying for those loans through those programs. Uh, so if you are getting names like that, it may be something to inquire further. And I'll loop back into how best to uh, verify those things because really that is the biggest thing with a lot of these scams is you independently verifying what information you have control. But I'll loop back into the idea of what kind of what what you can do to really help protect yourself. And so again, this is the second or the the, the biggest trending scam right now because it is touching upon an area that a lot of folks don't have a lot of experience with, and that's computer viruses, you know, tech support. Uh, you know, a lot of people are, are certainly, computers are, are kind of a way of life now, but a lot of people don't understand kind of what goes into that computer running and what bad guys can do with access to that computer. So, you know, sometimes you might be browsing uh, on the internet and a, you receive a pop-up. Uh, that covers your screen and says, your computer has been infected by a virus. Please call this number. And it provides a number for you to call. You know, the pop-up is obviously a, similar to like a robocall that you get. The pop-up is not real. I actually say not real. It is not uh, accurate with what happened to your computer. It was just a marketing ploy, and they're trying to get you to call that phone number where the scam really begins. They will depend upon what that fraud or crime ring is trying to do. There may be a couple scenarios that you will uh, be kind of told about. One, they're going to try to sell you their virus removal service, and they can do it right then and there, uh, and they charge you, you know, some nominal fees, thousands of dollars, or whatever it may be. But the biggest thing that they will convince you that you need to do to remove this virus is install what's called remote viewer software. So basically they will say, click on this link or whatever it may be, or download the software, here's a website to go to, and it will download uh, technology that will allow the bad guys to have full access to your computer. Then they will convince you that you need to log into your bank account or whatever it may be, Again, there's a lot of different kind of nuances to how these fraud rings will, will uh, dictate, I guess, the, the story they're trying to tell you, again, depending on what they're trying to get at. 
but by and large, they're trying to get you to send money or log into your bank account after they've installed that remote viewer software, which allows them basically to capture the login information for your bank. Once they have that, they can obviously do whatever they want with any funds that you have in your bank accounts. So if you do receive one of those pop-ups, uh, you know, it is best to ignore them. Sometimes they do block your screen. Usually you can just hit escape, alt tab or whatever, and it will, you know, switch to a different screen and just ignore that pop-up. Uh, but again, there's a lot of different scams they pull off once you call their phone number. They, some of the other ones are, oh, hey, you know, we charged your, uh, you know, it's charged your credit card of $500. Did you authorize that? Oh no, I, I already have you know whatever virus software I like to get that removed. And so they they are more than happy to help with refunding that money. But again, they do it by convincing you to install this remote software. They have you click on uh, a refund amount, and as you're typing in five hundred dollars, lo and behold, it pops up as to fifty thousand dollars. And you know they uh, have already had you log into your computer or your bank account prior to that, and so they will convince you that in fact you did get a refund of fifty thousand dollars and that guy that you're speaking to or gal of course uh, is going to be fired the boss is going to be hot you know the the, the company is going to be in trouble because you, you requested a fifty thousand dollar refund when you were doing five five hundred dollars and so they kind of tear at your heartstrings that you know they're in trouble and you got to really help me out here and hey can you just wire that those funds back so they convince you that you need to wire $49,500 back to them because you, you got too much, too big of a refund. Uh, so, you know, they, they will do that and then they'll have you wire additional funds if they can, of course, convince you to do such. So, again, there's a lot of different types of scams, but it all starts with either receiving a robocall or some type of uh, uh, email that says, you know, you have a virus or, hey, if you charge your account, please call this phone number. Once you call that phone number, those are uh, you know, bad guys, uh, fraud, fraud rings that are going to try to take any type of money they can get. From. So that's kind of tech support, just in a brief nutshell. I kind of touched on this earlier with with the you know COVID timeframe, but dating websites are a treasure trove for fraudsters in trying to basically build a relationship with somebody. They can claim to be whoever they want to be online and put whatever profile pictures they want. They can send you, you know, uh, text messages on a, on a near every minute basis if you are engaging with them. Their ultimate goal is to try to build a relationship with you and then just start asking for money. I, I can give you a litany of different explanations that they have, victims have been provided as to why they need to send money to this person that, you know, they have fallen in love with online. And they've, you know, they, they truly feel that they have a existing relationship with this person online. They've never spoken to them typically. They've only, you know, exchanged text messages. But a lot of these start out, and I'll loop back into kind of the communication methods later on, but they start out through that dating website. So whatever, plenty of fish, I, you know, take your pick of, of, of dating websites. And then the person will ask them to move their conversation away from that and then to you know, WhatsApp or some other uh, messaging service, which is kind of a, a key right there that something's amiss. But I mean, I'm, I'm not saying that there aren't legitimate reasons why somebody would ask for money online, but if you've never met the person in real life, if you, you know, uh, have only received still photos of that person and they're starting to ask for thousands upon thousands of dollars, it starts out usually small, and then they ask for larger and larger amounts once they uh, once you agree to send money. But if you've never met that person, it's probably not real. I mean, I, I hate to say that, but if the person's, they might be sweet, they might be loving, but they're there to get your money. So romance scams have been wildly successful as well. We have a lot of very intelligent individuals with money that uh, they sadly uh, depart with. Uh, or I shouldn't say it sends to these folks, and you know, then that money is then able to get back to them because it's sent overseas or whatever. So, again, the last two things I want to cover briefly are going to be more red flags on when you do receive phone calls about, oh my gosh, your 
uh, social security number was just found in a, in a uh, you know, investigation by pick, a, pick an agency, whatever you want to utilize uh, for money laundering. And now in order to clear your name, you need to purchase gift cards and send it to us, you know, which, uh, you know, any type, any time where you have a, a receive a call out of the blue, uh, you know, a pop-up, an email, and you call it and they're starting to have you send funds via these weird, I should, not, not weird, not, that's not the correct term, uh, you know, different payment methods like gift cards, like why a law enforcement agency would never accept a gift card as a form of payment for anything. Uh, so if, if they're convincing you that you need to make payments by a gift cards, probably a big red flag that there's a fraud scheme being perpetrated on you right there. Cryptocurrency, another thing. Cryptocurrency is kind of a hot, hot uh, topic right now. Everybody's supposedly making all this money in cryptocurrency and everybody wants to invest in it. And, you know, it's certainly a, a method that bad guys are utilizing right now to move those funds. It is definitely tougher to uh, follow the flow of money with cryptocurrency. But, you know, again, no law enforcement agency is ever going to have you make payments in cryptocurrency. But you also have to understand there are a lot of risks that comes if you are investing and the person wants you to invest in cryptocurrency. And all you have to do is wire your money to a wallet address or to Coinbase or Binance or pick any of the uh, exchanges that you utilize. And then you, you use your wallet there to wire, uh, send the funds to their wallet address. Once it's in that other person's wallet address, you cannot get it back. Uh, I mean, it's in their control. So you have to be very diligent about where you're wiring your funds, what type of investment you're making, and who's in control of that wallet. Because once you've sent it, you lose complete control of it. And likely, you've been scanned and may not see that money. So again, the payment methods are just areas where it should kind of raise a lot of red flags, maybe raise the hair on the back of your neck, like, I'm not being asked to buy gift cards for this person or to, to clear my name. That's, that seems really weird because it probably is. So just be cognizant as, as uh, you know, when you receive some of this marketing and these phone calls, these other red flags and payment methods. Communication methods is another thing that I mentioned that is similar to payment methods. If this person that I'm talking to by the dating website, why do they want to start utilizing a different messaging service? Uh, you know, I, I, again, you, you have to kind of raise some skepticism with a lot of these things, uh, you know, because a lot of times they're doing it because it's easier for the bad guy to maybe sign up for an account with that messaging service, or they're tougher to uh, you know, be monitored, whatever it may be, right? The bad guys are not, sadly, they're not dumb a lot of the times, and they utilize those communication methods that are often tougher for law enforcement to track or, uh, you know, take, uh, uh, get evidence from. So just be cognizant of, of those. I mean, phishing emails right now down at the bottom there too. Those are things you will get on a daily basis that are going to try to have you click on links that might install malware on your computer where they can do other things. I mean, the phishing emails can be extremely convincing now. I mean, they can almost make it look like it is uh, an email from your bank and you're going to click in, your, your account's been compromised. I mean, I get those on a regular basis. Your account's been frozen, your account's been compromised. All you need to do, you know, is, is click on this link to log back in. And once you do that, the bad guys have your credentials, and then they can log into those websites or accounts and do whatever they want. So the communication methods thing is just, it's not really a trending scam. It's just a method that bad guys utilize to make it harder for law enforcement or easier for them to carry out their, their fraud. So the last thing I kind of want to touch upon, of course, were ways to really avoid the scams in the first place or avoid being victimized in the first place. The first one and the biggest one is going to be do your own research and conduct independent verification of whatever it is they're trying to convince you is happening. So if I Highlighting one, so the tech support scams can also pop up, and, and when you call that, they can convince you that you, in fact, been compromised, and they will build upon it as they're building your trust and convince you that your bank account has also been compromised, 
but they also think it's a bank insider. So you cannot call your own bank because it will alert that bank or that, that bad guy that you know you're on from. Well, if that's the case, you know, you need to slow down. They're obviously going to try to create urgency with a lot of these scams. You do things right away without giving you time to think or, or conduct your own independent verification. But that is what you need to do. I mean, Bank of America, let's just say you bank with Bank of America, and they're trying to convince you that uh, Bank of America insider has is, is involved in this and has compromised your bank account. Well, I, I mean, you can hang up with them and say, I'd like to verify my own bank and you know, hang up, grab your own bank statements that has a Bank of America account number on it or whatever, some customer service number, and call that. Do not ever call the email that is provided or the phone number that's been provided by uh, through an email or in that same spam phishing email that you got there, because that is going to be a phone number that bad guys control as well. Uh, so, you know, you can certainly, if the, the hairs on the back of your neck are standing up, there's a lot of red flags, you know, Google romance scam or, you know, whatever. There are so many different other areas that you can conduct independent research to vet out what is trying to be perpetrated against you before you become a victim of it. So, I mean, protecting your personal and financial information kind of goes without saying. That's that's part of the that's always been around. But you know, things you can do up for to monitor your credit reports, make sure you're reviewing your bank statements, your credit card statements, phone calls. You know, Shannon mentioned that that uh, her father gets a lot of calls on a daily basis. Uh, you know, if you continue to get the, these calls, global calls, you can block the calls. You know, there are things you can do if you don't recognize the number, don't answer it, type of thing. You know, uh, if a person truly need something, they're going to leave a voicemail of who they are and what they really need. So you can at least, you know, try to get that information out if it's a number you don't recognize. Uh, so uh, avoid contacts with unknown entities. Again, it's okay to be skeptical and rude, possibly, because a lot of these bad guys, they are very aggressive. They're trying to instill a sense of urgency. Like, if you don't do it now, you are, you are in big trouble. We're going to arrest you, you know, whatever they want to tell you, it's just uh, you know, a ruse to make it uh, seem like you do what they want. It's uh, saying don't rush to act. Uh, again, they're, they're really trying to get you to do it immediately so you don't talk to other folks or verify it because they know that that will be the end of their scam and they're not be successful with taking the money. Uh, you know, the red flag, we talked about the using payment methods, cryptocurrency, does it sound too good to be true for like an investment fraud case or some of these romance scams? Like, oh, I, I'm a, you know, a, let's just say a, a mega millionaire, but I don't have access to my bank account right now. I'll pay you back. Or I've got an inheritance of, you know, $15 million. I, I but I, I don't have access to it yet. And as soon as I do, I'll get that money back to you and, and I'll give you, you know, five times that. Or, oh, we're going to be married. And I've got this, this inheritance. So, you know, I know you're only sending me a couple hundred thousand, but I've got this $15 million inheritance from my way. And certainly it's, I, I share it all with you. Uh, you know, I just want to be together. So, uh, you know, those are way, way too good to be true. Nobody's going to give you, you know, five times the money you give them. Uh, that's, that's not how uh, finances work. Uh, so again, actively seek information about trending scams and fraud. I, I provided you know, many, many websites that can, can do that. I mean, just Google fraud scams, trending scams, and you're going to find a treasure trove of information. And of course, report. if you've been victimized, do not be embarrassed. It, easier said than done, of course, but there are a lot of very successful, very intelligent people out there who have been victimized in these things. These bad guys are absolutely good at what they do uh, and very successful at it. So do not be embarrassed. But if we don't know about it, there is nothing we can do about it. So we do need to report that to whatever local law enforcement, FBI, or whomever uh, is in your area uh, to do such. So here's some resources that also are uh, places you can go to gather additional information. So I will kind of uh, highlight, you know, I mentioned I would loop back the IC3 thing. So uh, the third bullet point there is the ic 3gov if you have been victimized or have sent a wire that you realize, crap, I just got victimized in, and your, your three really most important steps, as timely as you can do, as soon as you realize you've been victimized and sent that wire, you need to contact your bank and issue, have them issue a wire recall. So report the fraud to them immediately. Have them issue a wire recall. Second, 
file that complaint with the IC3. There is a you know button for file complaint, and in there, obviously, the most important information is going to be yours, uh, the sending bank account information, but most importantly, the recipient bank account information. So, where did the bad guys tell you wireless funds that it should all be on the wire transmittal detail that you have you have received from your bank? So, you know, we take that, and stuff happens behind the scenes without your knowledge. Uh, to try to stop the flow of those funds. So we're going to make contact with, uh, you know, domestic banks, with foreign, you know, uh, intelligence networks to try to alert them that, hey, the fraudulent wire has been reported to us. Here's the information related to that. If, fund, if funds still exist in those bank accounts, please freeze those. Uh, you know, so we do have a very high success rate if reported in a very timely manner. First 24, 48 hours uh, domestically, of course. And, you know, right now that is our biggest push is trying to stop the flow of those funds because once it gets maybe a little dated or, you know, you don't hear about the information until much later, there's probably very little chance that that money is going to get you back to you at any point. Certainly not a guarantee, even if you so do report time with that. I was going to ask you a couple questions. Um, just that came up uh, when I was thinking about this. So, because one of the common calls that I know that um, both my dad and you know myself and friends have gotten to are those, you know, this is Excel Energy and um, your service is being shut off if you don't pay right now. Um, you know, that's that's one example, um, but I know there are lots of them. Um, you know, when someone calls you, I think it's always a really bad idea to give them your credit card or bank account information over the phone, um, even if it says on the caller ID, so that, that that's what's going on. I think you're better off hanging up and calling Excel from your statement or one of those things. Well, and that kind of comes back to my very first bullet point on there, which I you know, absolutely cannot say I'm done. It is, yes, independently verify what is being related to you. So you nailed it. If Excel claims they are calling you and your, your power has been shut off, yeah, you're going to be cold, right? That's not going to happen. But hang up, absolutely. Grab one of your Excel statements. Call the number on that. I will guarantee you that Excel uh, is not operating in that manner, and they are not going to uh, be setting up the power without giving ample notice and many notices in advance of your uh, making payments. That's not going to happen. So, yes, that is just the bad guy is trying to get you to send that money or credit card information right then and there. So I'm going to ask you one more question because I just found out that this was a thing a couple of years ago. Um, some people carry their social security card around with them. And you talked about um, protecting your personal information that especially with the identity theft, that's really concerning. So and I think um, those of us who are younger in the community, you know, you get your social security card, you put it in your file, filing cabinet, keep it safe and put away. Um, but I found out that some people carry their social security card around with them. So now I know we're required to have our ID um, with us, but your advice on carrying your social security card? Yeah, I would say probably not the best move. I mean, I would question as to why you carry it around. One, I mean, I, I, I'm, you know, I'm not saying I'm, uh, sadly I'm, I'm 48 today, but, uh, yeah, I can't even probably count on one hand how many times I actually needed my physical social security card for anything. Why would I need to carry it on a daily basis? Uh, you know, it does just open yourself up to if for some reason your wallet is lost, you drop it, you know, your purse or whatever is stolen, they are going to have your actual social security card, which they can do a lot of things with. Uh, if they have your social security number, your date of birth, you know, it will... Sometimes it's, it's, it's the method that, uh, which I don't think banks, but certain places use as a backup for your account. So if they happen to you know, also see a, uh, a bank, let's just say a bank, and I just, you know, how can they say it's a bank statement? You can see also a bank statement in your, in your purse or your wallet or whatever, a deposit slip. They also now know where you bank, and they might be able to do stuff with that and you know, gain access to your, your bank account or uh, you know, some other account that you may have. So again, it's just, why are you carrying it? What's the benefit to you? And it, it is just increasing the risk 
that if a bad guy is able to gain access to that card, what if it's going to be too? Is that necessary? Probably not. Well, Brian, thank you so much to you and our friends at the FBI. If anyone has any other questions, you're welcome to email this to us at the Jeff DeAngelis Foundation. And if we don't know the answer, we will get answers for you. So thanks, Brian. Thanks, FBI. We appreciate the amazing service that you do for our community. Thank you.